Hello, you lovely lot. So it's instructional time for you all again. Uh, we've got a bit of a, a casty one, haven't we, Jay? We are. We're going to do a, a demonstrative casting video. A what? A demonstrative? I like that, mate. Yeah, showing people. <laughs> so we're going to. What we want to get across is obviously when you're casting in, be it, uh, in this case, we're going to be casting out a little feeder rod with a bomb on to get the, the right distance. Um, so we want to go through where you're hitting the clip in comparison to where it's landing so you can get it onto your rest so you're not having to move the feeder. You like that, Jay? I do, I do, I like that. Um, it's all the it, little things to make sure it's happening as good as it can, isn't it? That's what we're interested in. Definitely, as, as coaches, I mean, Jay will agree as well. When, quite often when we see um, anglers casting in, all too often the feeder, when it enters the lake, it's going wallop and it's going brrrr, and obviously if you're on a method or anything like that all your bait's coming off yeah it's got to be landing with a little plop on it yes it's got to be cushioned doesn't it yes so like you're casting out it's a demonstrating bit you're casting out bringing the rod back so it hits the clip and then you're lowering it down so you're feeling the weight of the feeder or the bomb whatever you're casting so it lands with a nice plop on the on the lake and then you get that like column of water coming up and then going back down and it just oh, it looks amazing doesn't it, <laughs> it just does. it's really good a uh, couple of things to first though Obviously, I don't, I'm not going to be casting right up to the island at first. I want to get my distance right first. Blooming geese, noisy things. Mm -hmm. I want to get my distance right first. So I'm going to be chucking sort of two metres off, say, there or thereabouts. Then I'm going to clip up. Then I'm going to cast it again, see where I am in relation to, to, to where me... Uh, these blooming geese. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Rich? <laughs> We're still going, aren't we? Uh, yeah, in relation to where I'm having my rod on the rest. Now, obviously... Distance wise, we'll touch on it briefly. It's only, what you're saying, Jay, 25, 30 meters? Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, but we so know it, it's 32 turns on a reel. It is actually, <laughs> but if you, if you rich pans across to them reeds over there, it's about 27 and a half yeah, there, mate. Yeah, they're sticky out a bit now than they never used to be. They are sticky out your reeds. So, yeah, I've only got, for demonstration purposes, folks, I'm only using a nine foot bomb rod. You know, pretty much a 10 foot one, though, would cover a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah, commercials. Little islands, it's very rainy more than the 10, is it? Yeah, definitely. But obviously, to show all you lovely lot, I've just got first thing out of my rod bag because we want to go and catch some fishes, don't we? <laughs> first thing out of my rod bag, nine foot rod, and away we go. So, first things first. Now, I'm going to be chucking in with, uh, with a ledger bomb. Yeah. Uh, just so it, it's the weight, but obviously, it's the accuracy you can get with a, with a bomb. But these blooming geese! When you, if you're casting like a, an unloaded method, it's sort of like it's wobbling all over the place, it's isn't it? It's not quite right, is it? And it's very difficult. If you throw a cast with an unloaded method to begin with, then it doesn't go as far as a loaded method would. 100%. So you might clip it up perfect, and then that extra weight that the bait's going to create yeah. just takes it into weight. So really, you want to try and replicate the weight of your loaded method, but with a lead. Yeah, That little sneaky tip I used to do. I don't do it anymore. I don't know why. It's because you use inline. When I used to use elasticated methods, I used to have a, a method feeder with blue tack on it. All oh, right, and so that used to, I'd used to clip up with that. So you know it's it? like the, the the weight of the actual Same ground bait. Same weight, yeah. But I never use elasticated feeders now, so I don't bother. I'll just use braids. So there's no stretching the line. I don't really. <laughs> no, what what Jay obviously was on about then is when you quite often when you when you're casting out with a with a bomb or an unloaded feeder and you don't put bait on it. When you go to cast, when you're clipped up right tight to the island with bait on, obviously there's that stretch in your line, so it's going to go screwing. Yeah, first I cast, you put it on the island. I still do it now, folks. I've still not learned. But it's one of them. Uh, right, so come on, waffling a bit, aren't we? Let's come to the casting. Rich is going to get expertly get on it. So remember, folks, I'm not going to clip up to start with. Uh, I've got my marker. Now, yeah, obviously, if Steve Ringer was doing this video, he'd say you've got to get on a 10 pence piece every time. It's, yeah, you, don't get me wrong, folks. You have got to be accurate, but I suppose it's it's more so, for me, it's it's how it lands in the water, innit, with that plot where yeah. you're hitting it. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to get, I'm, I've, I've literally, I've lined up with like, I've got a dark bit of grass who's saying what, it's 18 inches square, something like that. That's what I'm going to be going for. But you know, if it's a little bit out either way, I'm not too fussed. Obviously, there's other areas you go, you might want to be tucking into a hole, you have got to be really accurate. But as long as it's landing right, that's the main thing. Yeah. So, first things first, what I want to make sure I've got, and we see it all too often, Jay, don't we, as anglers winding too far up, when they're going to cast. Yes, the drops. You're yeah. getting on this, Rich. So that drop, see a lot of anglers casting in from there. Now what can happen with that is it's just going to go straight across the lake or it's going to go up too high and it's just going to be going too far and it's not going to land right. So ideally with a nice three to four foot drop, something like that, that's how we want it. Yeah? So to start off with. 
The other thing we'll do that you'll see uh, anglers do is slightly swing it out. So you're creating like a, what are you calling it? Like a compression, like the, yeah, what do they call it? Pendulum effect. Yeah, like a, so it's like loading the, loading loading the blank the up. Well, that's behind you. That's not yeah, but it's still sort of like creating it here, so it drops down, then comes back, and yes. then it's sort of like, you know what I mean, folks, don't you? <laughs> I, like, I try and be all technical, but it's just, I know what I'm doing. All right, Jay's here for the technical <laughs> stuff. So basically, what I'm doing first, now, again, areas where I've seen anglers struggle in the past, they're coming over the wrong side of the shoulder. Rich will say otherwise, he's like giving it all this and in front of him, but he holds his pole like that, folks, you know what I mean? <laughs> don't listen to Rich. Uh, but myself and Jamie will... We'll point the actual feeder or the bomb where we want to cast and then we're bringing it back over our left shoulder and then going to cast straight away. As soon as you pause behind you, it's acting like a pendulum, isn't it? Yes. Behind you. Yeah, it swings straight. I I'm left shoulder because it keeps everything straight. Yeah, I definitely. If it goes over you to the right hand side of the rod, if you're right handed, it it's just it just feels wrong for me. I can't do it. When I'm coaching, I've got someone stood on this shoulder, I'm like, no, I've got to cast over my right shoulder, it's going to go over there somewhere. I can't do it. Yeah. So, right, I'm going to go for a cast this time, but remember, I'm going to drop it short, folks. I don't want to be casting too, too close to start with. So, lining the bomb up with, uh, with the grass that I want to go to, I'm going to slightly swing it forward, I'm going to come back, look where I want to cast it, up, and then I'm going to feather it in. So, that's, that's probably like there or thereabouts, but I'm going to clip that up. And I'm just going to chuck it a little bit closer this next time so we can replicate sort of spring summer fishing. You know yeah. what I mean? Getting a bit it's closer. It's just getting it so you're not going on the island, isn't it? You've, you've dropped it a bit short. Yeah, And definitely. you're going to sneak your way up instead of go for it and yeah. put, put lead in the island. Go squirrelling. Yes. Go squirrelling, Jay. I, I've been squirrelling lots and lots over the years, folks. I will, I will admit. So I'm going to go for it again. So go through it. Are you getting in and all this, Rich? Expert, isn't he, folks? An expert. So again, three to four foot drop. Swing it out slightly. Come back. Look where you want to cast it. Up, hit the clip, lower it down. So you see what I mean about that plop? So it's landing, and then you get that column of water coming up, and it's going back down. So I'm gonna gonna let out one, no, two revolutions on my spool. Uh, I always say revelations. Revolu <laughs> Re revelations. Revelations. Revelation of a revelation. Revelation that I heard the other day. <laughs> I was fishing Liam and Lake at 14 meter. <laughs> Sorry, Alice. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna, gonna come back. I'm happy with that now, but what I want to talk, talk these lovely people through next, Jay, is where I'm hitting the clip in relation to where I'm putting the rod on my rest. Yeah. Right. Well, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to be a pain. Go on. Because I was going to say it then. Um, when you were casting, so yeah. what I find that important as well, is the trajectory of the lead. When you cast and that lovely pendulum, mm -hmm. something I, I tell people about a lot is that a lot of people cast too high. Do you know what I mean? Releasing it too high. Right, yeah, okay. you want to cast. You cast when you're chucking, as long as you... The, the conditions are nice. Yeah, yeah. You want it to be relatively flat, don't you? You yes. don't want your lead to go too skywards. If it no. does, that's when the wind and things like that mess about with the, the accuracy and pull it off. The flatter you can cast within reason, depending on the distance, yeah. you know what I mean? It, it keeps it more accurate, doesn't it? Definitely. So, but the, a little bit more power to reach where you're trying to reach yeah. helps keep it lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the last thing you want, if, if, a, if a lead's flying fairly flat, but going past where it wants to go by hitting a clip it hits that clip and then you can land it yes whereas if the trajectory of the the feed of the lead is coming down then you hitting the clip makes it speed up and makes it enter the water quicker so catching the last thing you want is your feeder on its way down when it hits your clip because that rushes it into the water yes and that's where you get that that's where you get it? that fast splash yeah so it you... doesn't want to just get to where you're going because then it's on its way down yes it wants to be when you're hitting your clip if you that clip didn't exist yeah you're probably going five meters past yeah yeah, yeah, that. yeah 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 so that's a bit more force to get to where you want to go definitely helps lower it in nicer doesn't and it and also for having a like a softer rod helps as well doesn't it cushions it because what you'll yes. see when you're casting the bomb you'll get that row of bubbles so like the bomb might land here but then you'll get them bubbles going brrr, back under the water where it's coming back slightly yeah, if, you, if you like a floppy wrist you want almost don't you a soft rod and a floppy wrist yes and it helps it pull it in Whereas if you, if you hold it fixed right where it wants to hit your clip, yeah. it hits it and bounces back. So that is leading on perfectly to what we're going to go through next to you, where in relation to you want to hit the clip to where you're putting your rod on your rest because you don't want to move the feeder once it's in, do you? No. So what, what I'm still. looking to do is sort of like, I'll cast it, then you'll notice, folks, we'll bring the rod back, so I'm looking at it sort of like, 12 o'clock I suppose and then you can actually guide it sometimes as well can't you yeah. if you're tucking further you can sort of like guide it in so it's like if you mend it out a little bit left and right but I want to hit the clip uh, up here between sort of like 11 and 12 so that I can wind down and bring my rod 
down onto my rest so I've not got a tight line. The worst thing I want to do, I'm just getting down here, Rich, the worst thing I want to do is end up with a tight line and a rod there. Yeah? Tight, so what I've got to do then is obviously move that back onto my rest. Yeah, what I want to do is end up there us. and then wind it down so it's on my rest. Yes. So we demonstrate, should we do it yes, in one? Yes, dem demonstrate. Right, so three or four foot drop again, swing it out slightly, come back, in, out, plop, and then I can wind down. It was a bit off target, but we'll, we'll have it there, we'll have it there. Yeah. So you see, I've got like two or three winds on that reel then. Obviously, next thing is make sure you sink your line, um, put it under the water, bay line on with your hand, so that sometimes if you wind into it, you can move that feeder. But that's, that's basically it, isn't it? Yeah. And then you, by you, doing it the way you've done it, I, I hate me. If I cast a little bit too far, yeah. I hate being on my clip when it's on my rest. I love having them two revolutions. Yes. Revolution, two revolutions of line, two thirds of line Let, on my spool. Let, let's do amount. it. Let's do it. So we've done the right way. I'm going to do the wrong way now. So I'm going to, what I'm doing, I'm going to give it a bit more power. I'll probably go into the reeds this time, but I'm going to leave it so I'm hitting my clip with my rod low. Yeah, so this is what you don't want to do, folks. So when you're casting it, bring that rod back, not enough. Yeah, so you see I've got a tight line there. So what I've got to do now, I haven't got anything left on me, uh, on me clip. I've got nothing left! I've got nothing left! So what I've got to do is bring that, bring that rod back and it's too much of a tight line. You've can't moved get away the with feeder it. potentially then, haven't you, by getting it to there. And Jamie, what don't we want to do? Don't want to move feeder. Don't want to move <laughs> the feeder. So we'll just do one more, one more proper one. And obviously, you know, in relation to where you cast into, you know, where the island is, experiment with that on the day, folks. We, we don't know, do we? I mean, if I were a carp, I'd be right under the reeds. Yeah, oh, yeah, this is it's just, just one of them. Yeah. So, another one. So, swing out, come back, nice and gentle, hit the clip right back there. So, you see, this time, folks, got the rod high so I can wind down, put that rod right under the water, sink the line, let out a little bit of line if I need to, and I'm straight on my rest and I'm fishing. Easy, isn't it? It's just getting used to it, isn't it? Yeah. You see, like you don't have to give it loads or anything like that. That's why I'm using quite a heavy bomb. It's like an ounce in this in this situation. And even if you had like a, a bad crosswind, an ounce lead would soon get through it. That's the beauty yeah, of it. It cuts through the work. Through. Talking of which, as well, when you hit the clip, um, I find that once you've hit your clip, yeah. What I want is to get my rod down as quickly as possible as well, because the longer you keep yes. your line, your uh, rod vertical after you've yeah. hit the clip the more of a build up forms in your line. Definitely. And then it but just becomes, it takes longer to tighten up to your feeder, which is something I never want. Yeah, 100%. I mean, so as soon as you hit it, it's literally a case of hit your clip, put your rod down, and you want that line to be straight on the water, not curling all the way around, ideally. If it's Mate, curling, like then it's... I like that. Can I, can we, can we, have we got time just to do like a, what a bad cast is? Yeah, come on. So we do, so do. folks, we've been going through, obviously, good casting, because we as professionals, innit, don't do a bad one now, where I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit the clip, but I'm not going to hit it right. So you'll see the difference with how it lands. Are you going to get expertly zoomed in, Rich? I might be a little bit He's on it. He's on it. Mate, he's on it with big doofus. So, as you've got to cast it, if you don't hit the clip right, is that nowhere near that, Rich? Was it? I want even, I want even. Right, let me do another one then, hang on. Quite a wee bit further did you, did you hear the noise? I know I didn't, I sort of like a little bit limp-wristed then. Not like limp biscuit. Who were they, Rich? Banned, innit? Rolling, that's a minute. Is that that one? Rolling, rolling, rolling. Right, go on, let's get on it. So I'm not going to hit the clip proper. Yeah, that's, the, that's the difference. That's what me and Jamie see time and time again when we're coaching. Yeah. If you did that, all your baits come up. Doesn't off, matter it? that it's the right place or whatever, it's landed like, look, well, you've just got a feeder and just gotten in the water. It's a mess, isn't and it? And how many times, Jay, do we, do we see people who just leave that, leave it in? Yeah, that'll Can't do. do it, folks. If you're, even if it's going left and right and you can see it flying off uh, when you're going to cast, don't think about it. Stop it mid-air, bring it back, chuck it in again. It's, it's got to be right, hasn't it, yes. mate? That yeah. chop has got to say. If you're not confident, it ain't going to go round, is it? Got to be confident, folks, isn't confident. it? Confident. Mm. I like that one. That's a nice little informative how to cast properly and not make a mess of it. Mate, I'll make a mess of anything, but yeah. not this. Yes. It's lovely.